Hello everyone and welcome to today's data science question, which is from Google. With the wealth of data being captured by companies, not all of them will be structured and numerical. So today our focus is to hone your skill in manipulating strings. In this video, we will introduce a few advanced functions as we tackle a hard SQL question from Google. But before we do that, if you want to learn more about data science, just hit that subscribe button. So our question today is entitled File Content Shuffle. If you want to follow along, you'll find the link in the description box below. So to better understand this question, we'll first have to have a look at the data set we're working with. The table Google File Store provides a list of text files with the file name as one column and its contents on the other. Both columns are string data. Our data contains a file name called final.txt. The question asks us to look at this file, sort the contents of this alphabetically, and return the results under a new file name called wacky.txt. Thus, the expected table should have wacky.txt as the first column and the manipulated contents of final.txt in the second column, just like this. When dealing with strings, expect punctuation marks, numbers, and duplication of words like the, and, and a. Data will not always be clean, so ask your interviewer or make a decision on how to deal with these. For simplicity, let's ignore them for now. So let's jump into our solution approach. So it's important to first understand how we're going to solve the problem before we start coding. This provides us with a roadmap towards a solution in case we get stuck along the way. From a high level, the question requires us to one, filter the table where the file name is final.txt, two, sort its contents alphabetically, three, convert the words into lowercase, and four, return the contents with wacky.txt as the file name column. While it sounds simple, it isn't as straightforward because the contents are in string format and are encoded in one row only. This is how our dataset looks. However, if we have the contents reformatted so that each word is on its own row, sorting this alphabetically will be easy. Let's transform the data for easier manipulation. We will convert the string into an array to recognize each word as an individual element. Then we can explore this array column-wise so that each element or word is represented as a separate row. This will allow us to do the usual sort through the order by clause. So now we have our added step, data preparation, where we will first split the contents into an array using a space as a delimiter, and then explore the array column-wise. However, for our final table, the contents need to be returned as a string like this. So we will need to reverse the transformation in step two by gathering the rows into an array and combining these elements in a string. So here we have our added step, data reformatting. First, turn back into an array and then combine into a string. So let's jump into coding our solution. So first we want to filter the table. Let's look at the file final.txt. We can do this through using an equality condition in the where clause since we know the exact file name we are looking for. However, if we only knew it started with final, we could use the like or I like function. These two functions are used to match strings based on a given pattern. The only difference is that like is case sensitive and I like is not. In our case, we can use I like function with the wildcard operator percentage representing zero or more characters. This allows us to retrieve the records where the file name starts with final. Now, let's go to step two, data preparation. Here we will prepare the data for manipulation. We will use this string to array function, which takes in a string and converts this to an array or a list. The elements in the array are based on the delimiter we specify. So if you use a space as delimiter, it creates an individual element whenever it sees a space. Essentially, it will break up our text into words, just like this. So as we can see here, arrays provide a lot of information at one go, but we cannot access or analyze this contents easily. So a common manipulation done in arrays is exploding them. We can do this with the unnest function which will take an array as an input and output a column where each array element becomes accessible in a separate row. Imagine this as a row to column transformation.
So now let's go to our third step. We can sort this alphabetically using the order by function. Now let's move on to our fourth step, where we will convert the words into lowercase using lower. The next step is our data reformatting step. So finally, to return the contents in a string format, we'll do the reverse of the steps earlier. First, we will aggregate the rows of the contents column into an array using the ArrayAg function. ArrayAg is an aggregate function, so like your sum and average, it will take a column and output a single row summarizing the set of values. But here, instead of performing a calculation, it will return an array listing all the values of the column. Then we can return this as a text by combining these individual words. The array to string takes in an array and combines the individual elements using a specified delimiter. Again, we will use a space to combine these words and finally it will return the text in a string format. We can also hard code the file name as wacky.txt in the file name column. Our final solution should look like this. So here is some bonus content for advanced users of SQL. You may be familiar with the regex split to table function, which gives the same output as the unnest string to array combination we used earlier. Regex split to table will take in a string, separate by a delimiter and return a table with each element in a separate row. This is helpful for more complex manipulations where the use of regex is required. In this example, however, the delimiter is simply a space, so the code is this. And this gives us the same result as the unnest string to array combination earlier. So this was an interesting example to level up your string manipulation skills in SQL, and I hope you learned something new from this video. If you ever find yourself stuck doing string manipulation, remember you can transform the data into another format first, if that makes the next steps easier. Converting strings to arrays is now one of the tricks up your sleeve to impress your interviewer. Practice more examples and test your new skills on our coding platform. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.